I am going to ramble about relationship between man and the woman. Uh, in the olden days, and for many centuries, um, men were known to be the head of the family. And when you come from traditional societies or communities, when you are a man, you assume that the woman belongs to you. Your woman is like a property. Um, this is why it took a long time before the woman could be allowed even to vote. I don't mean black women, I mean white women, even in the United States of America. It was about 100 years ago before women were allowed to have a say in the running of the, of the government. Um, so there are still a lot of places today where women are subjugated or expected to be submissive to their husband. And in most cases, in the modern uh, families, it is not like that anymore. Anyone with that kind of mindset is likely going to re uh, regret it. Hey, by the way, my name is Dr. Joe Adeboyega in West Salem, North Carolina. I, I thought I'd bring this up because I have seen instances where people needed help to be able to better understand how they should interact between husband, the, the kind of interaction that is, should be in the modern days expected between husband and wife. Um, there was a story back uh, about 30 years ago in Canada. This gentleman went to Moscow during the time it was the Soviet Union. He was a Canadian and uh, fell in love with some uh, this uh, beautiful female engineer who was in Soviet Union and was desperate to leave Soviet Union to come to Canada. So of course she did everything to maintain a good uh, rapport with the man. The man brought him, the man made all the noise, contacted all the authorities, made sure he got a visa to come to Canada. Either he brought her to Canada, expecting her to be his property, and have to listen to him, and not have to have any say, more or less like buying a slave. And, and that lady was a highly educated, highly um, um, uh, intelligent uh, uh, female, but because she was Soviet, and because she was Russian and female, he thought that he has more power, more privilege than the woman. So he started maltreating her. And what she did was fight back. Once she became a citizen, she fought back. She moved out. She got custody of the children. And he was completely dejected. He was not expecting it. He thought she would just bow down to him and continue to be that submissive woman. Now, that man is not much different from many of my Nigerian friends. Many of my, uh, when I say friend, uh, kind of in parenthesis, because they are not people that are very close to me. I mean, some Nigeria have, there are several stories of Nigerians who have found good women, black or white, either in America, in Canada, or in Europe, but still wanted a woman from their village. So they will abandon the woman here or make all kind of stories to leave the woman behind and go find a woman in their village. Either kill the woman over there or bring the woman to the new country and then divorce the first woman who might be their best friend. My one man I really know who was a pastor in Toronto, Canada, married, went home, left this white Canadian woman went home to marry a woman in his village who later became his worst enemy. They have five kids, and recent story I heard was his first child beat him up in the street of Toronto because of the acrimony and the animosity between him and their mother. So his intention was to go home, <coughs> go home, find a woman that he can control, a woman that will be submissive to him, and of course, she did everything to make him feel good, make him feel like she was going to be submissive. Either he abused her so much that she got to a point that she decided not to be submissive anymore. The fact was that with five kids, he abandoned her, went back to Nigeria trying to find another woman. That didn't work out. He wasted many years like that. And I believe he's living alone now from recent stories in a one-bedroom apartment in Toronto and not in contact with any of his children. So, <clears throat> I, I believe that people should try to understand, that when I say people, I mean men, 
should try to understand that when you have a Canadian passport or you have an American passport, the best idiot in, in this part of the world can go to Nigeria or any village, stand by the roadside and say that they are from US and Canada, and the most intelligent and educated Nigerian woman will bow down to them, wait for them to do all the paperwork, bring them over here before they raise up their voice and start to fight back to claim their right. So you remember the movie um, uh, by Eddie Murphy where he said, Eddie, half. So that is what's going to happen to many of these idiots who go home, abandon a good woman here, whether she's African or not, to go find another woman that they can control back home. There are lots of stories like that. Now, the next point that I wanted to address too is the fact that when two people love each other, man and woman, when two people love each other, they have all the time, in spite of stress from work and life in general, they have all the time to be able to take time off to be together and interact and talk and go to places. But once you have start having children, I experienced this myself, once you start having children, now the focus, the children now are between the two lovers. And many a time it is the mother who is the motherly person, who is the one who takes care of nurturing of the family, who makes sure the kids go to school, that they have their clothes, they have their food, and the homework is done. Many a time the man is so focused on working, maybe he might be making money, more money or less money than the wife, but because he assumed that he is the head of the family, he's not getting himself involved in a lot of the other household chores like laundry, food, shopping, and so on and so forth. So when the woman is, has a, expended a lot of her energy all day from work and house duties, she is crushed, she's exhausted at the end of the day. And the man is here all excited and wanted to uh, get a good, spend a good time with his wife, it won't happen because by the time you get back to the bedroom, the woman is exhausted and she might be snoring. So there has been cases, I'm not just talking about white family, uh, black families, I'm talking about white couples that I've counseled here in my office where a one, one uh, particular case, the woman was a teacher, very stressful job, this with children all day. And they have two girls who are twins. I think the girls were about eight, nine years old at that time. So by the time the wife is, uh, has spent the whole day taking care of everyone, the husband is left alone. The husband has no one to attend to his desires. So what happened was the husband now started cruising the internet looking for attention. So he cruised the internet and then started hanging out with the cheaters online. And then um, the um, online um, uh, uh, interaction with other women was not enough. They started using drugs. It was when the wife saw the pattern of how much money was spending on, on drugs and the uh, inability to pay some bills that she kicked him out and then he came for help. He moved in with his parents, came for help. I was able to put them back together. Once I explained to him that him and his wife need to find time to be to spend together and he needed to be helping his wife with house um, tasks and chores, that was when they were able to um, uh, reconcile and get back together. The wife came to my office a couple of times with them, and I explained the situation to them and I encouraged them to have a, a date night where they just them and uh, them alone, and the kids would be with the grandparents. And uh, it worked out. It worked out. Um, so, uh, in my personal life, while we're raising the children, um, I give uh, credit to my first wife that um, uh, most of the homework and the other things I help, I do help in the house, but I believe she did the major part of the work that so much so that she didn't have time to ensure that I have uh, the, the best uh, clothes to wear, the best shoes to wear, so I had to make sure I take care of myself in terms of how I dress and I'm not a very fashionable person. Now. Coming to when I met my second wife, we don't have children, uh, we have these grown children from my first relationship, it's only the two of us in the house. 
Veronica makes sure that I have good clothes. What I'm wearing today, she bought. She makes sure I have nice shoes. I have so many shoes. I thank God for that. And I praise her too for all her efforts. One day we were in Canada and she was helping me. Not that I couldn't tie my shoes, but she was trying to help me put on my shoes and so on. I saw Jerome walk by, looked at us, and then kind of shook his head and walked away. Because he never saw his mother do that for me. The mother was so busy taking care of the children that she didn't have time to make sure that Joseph would get help. And Joseph didn't need help to tie his shoes. But this is what couples do for each other when there are no children in between them. So if you want to be in a relationship where you want a woman to be devoted to you and you devoted to the woman all the time, don't have children. Just don't have children. So you have all the time to focus on each other. But once you start having children, and the children have to eat, they have to wear clothes, you have to wash their clothes, you have to send them to school, help them with the homework, then uh, you can forget about a very solid, strong relationship like you had in the beginning of your relationship. So I thought I'd throw this out there because this could help some people who might be going through that kind of period where, particularly uh, considering the quarantine now, where people are together all day, everybody is stressed, running, trying to help the children and so on and so forth. It will be something to consider to try and see how couples can find time to take time for themselves and, and, and try to rekindle that love that was, and that strong love between them. Until we meet again, I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Uh, this is uh, hello from, uh, I want to say, North Carolina. Thank you.